Welcome to this introductory lesson on sentence correction on the GMAT. In this lesson, we'll learn the basic structure of sentence correction questions, and we'll study the two primary goals when tackling questions. Now to begin, about one-third of all questions in the verbal section of the GMAT will be sentence correction questions, and these questions will typically appear in batches of two or three in a row. Now the other two verbal question types, that is reading comprehension and critical reasoning, typically require more time to answer. So I suggest that you spend no longer than 1.5 minutes on each sentence correction question. Of course, your target time for these questions may vary depending on whether you feel you should devote more or less time to the other question types. Now in general, sentence correction questions test your understanding of grammatically correct and effective written English. The structure of these questions is as follows. First, you're given a sentence, all or part of which is underlined. Beneath the sentence, you'll find five ways of phrasing the underlined part. The first answer choice is identical to the underlined part. The other four are different. If you feel that the original phrasing is best, choose the first answer. Otherwise, choose one of the others. Now there are several things to consider when examining the answer choices, and these considerations are noted in the official directions. Here's the most important part of those directions. In choosing your answer, follow the requirements of standard written English. That is, pay attention to grammar, choice of words, and sentence construction. Choose the answer that produces the most effective sentence. This answer should be clear and exact without awkwardness, ambiguity, redundancy, or grammatical error. Notice that these directions are not exclusively concerned with grammar. Now, of course, the correct answer will always produce a sentence that is grammatically correct. In other words, the correct answer will conform to all of the rules and principles that we'll examine in this module. However, when two or more answer choices produce sentences that conform to these rules, we must select the answer choice that most effectively conveys the intended message and uses proper diction. So let's examine what it means to have an effective sentence that uses proper diction. To begin, an effective sentence expresses the intended message clearly and concisely. Now this does not necessarily mean that the correct answer choice will be the one with the fewest words. It means that the correct answer will not contain overly complicated expressions and superfluous words. It also means that the correct answer will be free of any ambiguity. We'll discuss what all of this means in future lessons. Okay, now when it comes to proper diction, we're referring to the choice and use of certain words. On the GMAT, the correct answer choice will contain words that are appropriate for the context of the sentence. For example, which of the following sentences uses the appropriate word? Kayla doesn't know if she passed the test, or Kayla doesn't know whether she passed the test. In the given context, the correct word here is whether, as in, Kayla doesn't know whether she passed the test. We'll learn more about appropriate word choices in future lessons. Now, when tackling sentence correction questions, it's important to remember that your goal is not to find the best possible way to express an idea. Your goal is to choose the best answer among the five given options. Failing to understand this distinction can cause problems. To illustrate this, consider the following question. Trudy likes to hike, swim, and to bowl. Now this sentence has a problem with parallelism, and in future lessons you will learn that when we have a series of similar elements, we should express those elements in similar form. So an easy and correct way to fix this sentence is to write, Trudy likes to hike, swim, and bowl. Now some might argue that this is the best way to fix the sentence. However, this does not mean that one of the answer choices will match this particular fix. For example, the answer choices could look something like this. The best answer among these answer choices is D. Trudy likes hiking, swimming, and bowling. So keep in mind that there are many different ways to fix a broken sentence, especially when those sentences are much more complex than the sentence shown here. So if you have a particular fix in mind, you may waste time looking for the answer choice that may not exist. Just remember that your job is to choose the best answer among the five given answer choices. Okay, that's all I want to say about that for the moment. Let's summarize. In this lesson, we examined the basic structure of sentence correction questions, and we examined some important considerations when checking the answer choices.